Hello my friends, and welcome to another part of our Flat Earthology. Comets, meteors and shooting stars. But no, not the UK TV version from the 90s. With good old George Dawes and uh, Vic and Bob, no. This, friends, is something truly amazing that happening right in front of our eyes. Spontaneous electric luminous manifestations. Have you ever seen one for yourself? Now, this is a must, thanking Gabrielle, Henriette, and her wondrous tome, Heaven and Earth, also known as the Solid Vault of Heaven. Now, this book, friends, has been in the public eye for many years. Here is the full copy in all its majestic glory and will be below for your own perusal. Now, ever since I read the words that she had written, I have always wanted to share them and put them into a context that anybody can understand, just like we did with the amazing Zetetic Lady Blount a few years ago. There is not too many flat earth or lady flat earth advocates. So here we are. Now this is a must read for every person who can, because not only is it very good, you will find the answers to questions in much need of answering. Now comets, meteors and shooting stars. So what are they? These very mysterious phenomena, or this very mysterious phenomena, taking place in the vault of the low orbit space. These spectacular electrical spectacles that we can all see at the right time and place. So let's start with comets. Now these seem to be spontaneous luminous manifestations created by electrical reactions occurring in the vault of the sky. Now this explains their sudden appearances and rapid erratic movements across the sky. They make no sound whatsoever and they follow certain constellations also on that same path around the plain earth. Hence that reoccurrence of them throughout our entire history and are also predicted. So maybe there is really some kind of mathematical law governing the formation of comets and their incredible connection to the zodiac. Maybe they obey the electrical magnetic attraction of the sun and moon. Nevertheless, friends, seems that they always have this singular power of driving their comet tail away from the sun, however fast the comet may be rushing around the sun and however long its tail may be, it is almost always found to stream in opposite direction from the sun, yet no uniform direction as the luminaries have. They never stand still, do they? And they seem to follow the same course. Now to mention the first comet that was ever to be photographed, the Great Comet of 1858. Donati's Comet, witnessed by Abraham Lincoln, his very self, friends, now this sweetheart was seen and observed for 269 days shooting across the Earth's sky, never once going or seen to be going backwards. Now in the heliocentric globe theory, the spinning bald Earth belief, this most certainly had to have happened because it said that the planets are uh, retrograding, moving backwards as the Earth moves and orbits the 93 million of miles away Sun, and that the Earth itself is supposed to rotate once every 24 hours. Now I think we can all beg to differ here, can't we friends? Because in all seri seriousness, the only curve that you will ever see on this plain Earth will be a learning one. Now this electrical spectacle of a comet was seen for almost a whole year, continuously moving forward and across the Earth's sky vault. Now in reality, friends, this can only happen on a plain Earth. As you can see here, this is the map that was used to chart it and watch it move across the Earth. And guess what map it is, friends? Yes, you are correct. It's the azimuthal equidistant one, of course. It has to be, friends. I mean, how else does one see it if the Earth is not flat? Try and think about that empirical truth, friends. It's undeniable. Now, there are periodic comets or short period comets also. And for instance, Halley's Comet was last seen on February the 9th, 1986 and will next be seen on July the 28th, 2061. 
again, try and think about this, friends, seriously, and ask your heart, how can this be predicted when Earth, in the crazy heliocentric belief, is moving away from the so-called Big Bang at an alarming rate of miles an hour force, and has been for millennia. And even the fateful Heaven's Gate cult were following a comet trail, weren't they? Now, if only they had a copy of the Solid Vault of Heaven. It's been in the public eye since 1958. And we all know knowledge is power, don't we? Now, Halley's Comet will come to fruition in due time, friends. And I hope in the coming years, I will be able to make an upload of it in 2061. Please subscribe to the channel for that one. I will be 21 by then. Try and work that one out, friends. Now, meteors are also luminous phenomena, resulting from electrical reactions which occur in the sky vault. Even so, they are also accompanied by retinations, which means a backward impulse of an explosion, and also a sound similar to thunder. The height of meteors never seem to exceed about 55 miles above the plane, and it's known in the scientific community that the thickness of our atmosphere has actually been measured. Even though it's invisible, and since the firmament is the only surface on which the eye can actually rest on, it is clear that the thickness of the atmosphere plane means the height of the firmament. Subsequently, the azure colour of the atmosphere plane may be due to the presence in the surface of the skies certain metals or of their alloys, which provides that blue colouring matter, just like you see with copper oxide or with cobalt. This has a blue colouring to it. Some meteors are actually found on the ground that contain metals, friends. But this do, I have to mention though, that it's very hard to distinguish fact or fiction when it comes to the ones that are actually found, friends. And apparently, so-called meteorite ALHA81005 was found in Antarctica, of all the places on Earth, friends, to be found, and it is said to be from the moon. Oh, really? Well, my sister married an Irishman from the moon, what was his name? O'Reilly? No, O'Reilly. <laughs> A joke, friends. Another yarn, part of the heliocentric story to help convince belief in a science fiction world, bringing me to mention asteroids and the asteroid belt. My friends, these are all part of this unscientific heliocentric belief that perpets it. It creates a type of fear that is a stable diet of science fiction stories and daily life stories for that matter, as the asteroids play several potential roles in science fiction real life, don't they? As places human beings might colonize or resources for extracting minerals, hazards encountered by spacecraft traveling between two other points as a threat to life on Earth, or other inhabited planets, dwarf planets, or exoplanets, or a natural orbiting satellite by potential impact of one. All science fiction, my friends, and certainly not of the real reality empirical science facts of nature, what's really going on right above us in the vault of our sky. Remember the upload, the firmament fragment, I did a couple of years ago. It's certainly worth watching after this one, friends, the Skystone Meteor, and remembering Ezekiel 126, and above the firmament that was over their heads was the likeness of a throne as the appearance of a sapphire stone. And upon the likeness of the throne was the thickness as the appearance of a man upon above it. Very interesting, friends. But finally, coming to shooting stars. Now this phenomena, not to be confused though with our beautiful and majestic normal stars, which form the constellations of the nighttime sky and that move at a very, very slow pace during those evening hours. 
and any such time-lapse video photography will, conclus uh, will conclusively prove 100% to the beholder that it is not the earth that moves. Now shooting stars, more luminous manifestations which glide rapidly on the surface of the vaults of heaven without any electrical discharge towards the earth below. On a clear evening, if you look long enough, you may see one shooting across the vault. They may be related to lightning, as they seem to be making a crackling sound like sparks. Small, rapidly electrical moving meteors burning up inside the Earth's atmosphere plane. If you do see one, friends, maybe you should make that special wish, because cosmic ordering is for all. All you have to do is ask friends. Thank you for your time with me today. I am trying to do one a month, as this way I will be able to get everything done. I can't wait to do the next one though. I'll see you all in that one. Much love and be safe. This was Nibi.